everyone, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I am going to try and be as comprehensive as I can about my maxillaria variabilis. A comment from Brenda Jernigan has spurred on this video regarding maxillaria variabilis. Not just necessarily the care, but let me put it out there. Anybody watching this video has maxillaria variabilis. How about getting in touch with me and we can do a care collab on it specifically at a later date? King and his hedge, stop. There we go, thank you. But Brenda, I may be getting an email from you, I don't know, but there could be a lot of correspondence back and forth that I thought maybe I could clarify with a video regarding getting a maxillaria variabilis into the house and how to make it happy, whether to know if it's rooted in or not. You see, the problem here is they are so easy to propagate that a lot of vendors will just go in and cut a piece like this, for example, out there. They'll just take that all the way out and then stick it in a pot, which is naughty because that doesn't mean that it's rooted in. And then the question is, how long ago was it propagated in order to sell on the maxillaria variabilis? Is it even rooted in? And they will do that five or six times and put it maybe into a, a five inch pot and they'll sell you a maxillaria variabilis. And until you don't go in and see if the, there are any roots in the pot, you think maybe you have an established orchid as opposed to just bits and pieces. The thing is that when I got this one, it was in sort of the cocoa husk, cocoa choir, peat moss, very, very loose media, very, very water retentive. And luckily mine actually had roots in the pot, which made it easy for me then just to really clean out the root system because I was going straight into inorganic and I just washed everything out under the tap and put it into an orchid top. And this is not a must, but I put it into this orchid top and you can see that since then, well, the pot is pretty much engulfed and consumed. Please don't be put off by these mineral deposits. This orchid is not burning up in there. This is a hungry orchid now. But the point is, I put it into inorganic media, highly water retentive ceramis and some LECA, but super water retentive. And that's the thing when you get your maxillaria variabilis in, I'm assuming you have a variabilis. Same would apply if it was any maxillaria or a tenifolia. Same method of propagation, same way that they just put it in a pot and sell it to you on. If it's been propagated recently, then there are no roots in the pot. And then the problems start. What needs to happen is to give it a maximum amount of humidity around the plant while it acclimates. You see, the thing is that, and I might be preaching to the choir, please don't mistake this for, I'm not trying to be patronizing, but I'm just going to go pretending that this would be a first and just go with the basics so that I don't miss something or if I'm just assuming you know something, then, you know, we'll all get it wrong. But the thing with the variabilis, it is generally known that this is a new growth right here. And in here, once the new growth starts to mature, the, all the roots will carry on down through the stem, all the way down into the media. Very, very rarely, do they come out of the sheaves there? So that's the first problem. If you have, let's say, two or three growths, let me get an example. Here's a piece that literally just broke off from the base, and that's what it can do and will do as the tops get heavier and heavier with a progressive growth. And here, finally, there is a root coming. And I have it in this setup with my hob filter in a plastic bottle and I put the dome on top 
We're doing this very, very casually here on the back of my patio where I'm a little bit more protected from the wind. And King is super interested in everything I'm doing here now. But you can see, I hope, whoops, reflection, bad. Improvising, but we'll get there. But you can see how it is in an enclosed space. Sometimes I open it up depending on the temperature and the ambient humidity to let some air in, but mainly I have it closed off. Now, what nurseries will do is, as I mentioned in the beginning, they will snip off these growths from a maxillaria variabilis or any maxillaria for that matter, because they're that easy to propagate. And they'll just stick the stem into the pot and probably sell it to you within two weeks. This high humidity little dome here has only just created its first root down there. And that's taken four months. And you can see that the growth itself, the, the, the pseudobulbs are desiccating, which is normal because the orchid is putting energy into root growth. But the new growth is trying to establish itself. Little trooper even tried to bloom. But in the bracts, the brown bracts all the way down, all the way down are new roots. And this is the one growth here at the base that is going to be the future of the orchid with its new roots coming out. If you get an orchid, a maxillary variabilis that looks not to be doing very well, I would just take it out of the media straight away and put it, give it some super high humidity. I know this is only one piece, but it really needs high humidity in order for those roots to either start developing or even have the strength to push themselves out of these extremely woody, strong bracts here. Unless one does that, there won't be a chance for its survival. Just normal in the pot and then watering every once in a while is not enough. The media has to be highly, highly water retentive, regardless of whether you've got roots in a pot or not. If you're going to repot and you put it into LECA and self-watering or semi-hydro, make sure that the LECA is the smallest of LECA that you can ever get. Consider it an oncidium kind of root system that will then develop in the pot. And it needs to be very, very water retentive so that the orchid, as she develops, not only has she got a lot of humidity around her in order to get established, but will be able to also sustain new growths when she does get going and for the future health of the orchid. Very, very thirsty orchid. But this is really an, an impromptu video. It might help others as well. Again, my example is my variabilis here, but it goes for any maxillaria. They are so easy to propagate that the nurseries will literally just take all bits and pieces all the way down to the base of the mother orchid and just nip it off. And some, as mine did, will just break off. And then they'll just stick it into a very highly water retentive pot. And if they have to sell it the next day, that's what you'll get. And it is really, really naughty. So yes, this is a beginner friendly orchid up to a certain point. It depends what you get to begin with. And I always encourage people when they ask me about this orchid, and that's why I'm doing a video now, is to go into the pot, check the root system. Are there roots in there? And if not, immediately put it into really high, high humid environment and give the orchid time to establish roots. And if need be, put it into a cloche kind of uh, setup that maintains super high humidity until the roots actually start growing and then wait for them to be long enough before potting them up. Small media, small as in highly water retentive, small LECA and self-watering or semi-hydro and it's gonna love it eventually. If you already have roots in the pot, still same thing, wash out as clean as possible and then straight into the smallest LECA that you can find in the self-watering or semi-hydro setup of your choice and keep that reservoir full. It serves two purposes, high humidity around the orchid while it also gets established again and the orchid can draw from that water constantly without having to 
exert energy in trying to recover, grow roots, acclimate, and all of that stuff. Calcium and magnesium is always a good thing. Seaweed, preferably in the early days, a lot of seaweed. And if you have good ventilation, and I hope this wind now doesn't affect my mic, if you have good ventilation, there is absolutely no harm at all. It's actually favorable if you can spray the orchid down. I use my sprayer and I go in full throttle and just wet the orchid down completely because that also will encourage the roots that are beginning to grow at all the new growths. These roots that are coming in here that will never see the light of day, unless the humidity is super, super high, they will start to peak out, but that's very rare. This will soften it up, but the nutrients of seaweed will go in and encourage the root growth and the strength of the orchid will be encouraged from the calcium and magnesium, and then they can go all the way down and get into the media. So I do hope that this quick video is of help. Even if we are corresponding by email, I won't know until I get to my desk, but I think for anybody a future reference, when they get a maxillaria into their home and they see that it starts to languish and lose sustenance in the pseudobulbs like this, there are no roots in the pot and then it's already high noon to get moving in order to keep the strength in the orchid by these bulbs so that they actually have the energy to, to produce roots. So I'm hoping that makes sense, not just for Brenda, but anybody that gets a maxillaria into their collection and they're wondering, well, this one's supposed to be easy to grow. It is, but. It all depends what you get from the nursery. And these little pointers and things to look out for are key to the success of growing and establishing a maxillaria variabilis that one day will look like this. And maybe you get Cousin It 2.0. <laughs> I appreciate everybody that watched this video. If you have any further questions, if you have any further suggestions regarding this orchid and how to establish a weak one or possibly get one to recover, please feel free to share everything in the comments below for anybody that in future might be thinking, what am I doing wrong? Why is my maxillaria not doing well? And everybody says it's so easy. I appreciate your time very, very much. Thank you for putting up with this casual little soiree on my back patio and with Cousin It. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and please stay safe and take care. Bye.